Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I posted and I recently had to customize an Nginx config running in a Docker image and I always have to look up the syntax. So I wrote a quick how-to and I'm gonna share it with you now in this video as well. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of the steps here, um, but there's a, some assumptions that I have. So first of all, you could see that my Docker file, and I'll pop over here, so my Docker file right now, uh, it's actually the completed one. It's pretty simple. I'm just pulling a default Nginx um, container. Um, and then we'll go over this step in a little bit. And pretty much the content for this website is sitting under slash public. So all that content is right here. And I just copy that over. So there's a few commands um, that are helpful here if you want to follow along. So first of all, just kind of using Docker, uh, building the latest version of this site, you can just do a Docker build. Uh, I'm gonna tag it here with uh, a tag that eventually I'll use to push it to prod. Um, so you can run that real quick. And then the, and then you could go ahead and run this. Let me put this up at the top here. And so this will actually bring the site up and now you're running locally. So this is just sitting off of port 80. Um, I'll show you that here real quick. So if we look at our Docker Compose local, you can see here that I'm just taking that image, um, restarting uh, if unless it stopped, and then I just ported everything to port 80. So go ahead and run that again. So if I come back over here and just go to localhost, you'll see that here's the website. And one of the big issues I ran into was when I was working on the contact form, which uses JavaScript, um, I kept getting an Nginx 405 error because I was basically posting content back to a static web page, and it didn't like that. So there was pretty much a hack and uh, a hack that I read about on Stack Overflow where you really want wouldn't want to do it in production, but you could go ahead and do it in development. So I wanted to to tweak the Nginx config. So first things first, um, you uh, there's a couple different ways you could do this. So first of all, you don't have to look at the running Docker config. Uh, or the running Docker image, but the reality of it is, is that can be really helpful for debugging or other things. So I'm gonna actually kill this real quick and I'm gonna run it in daemon mode so I can free up my, um, my terminal here. So um, sometimes I need to just go into a Docker container, uh, see what's going on, try to figure out and debug. So the way to do that is you can do a Docker uh, container PS, and let me put this at the top of the screen. And you'll see here that I've got this Docker container up and running, and right here you've got a name for it. So the next thing we'll do, and I'm gonna cheat and use my command here, is that we're just gonna docker exec into that particular container. So what you can see here is we're gonna run docker exec, um, we're gonna run it in the interactive terminal, and then we've put the name in, and then I'm gonna run the ash shell. When I first did this, I actually ran the sh shell because I didn't know which ones were available, but ash is available. So if you do that, you actually get this prompt here, we're running as root, and we're now inside the running container. And so if you see like here is slash bin, so let's say you wanted to know what else was available, you could come under slash bin and you could see all the different items in here. So this is an Alpine image, it's using BusyBox, but we have a number of different shells, a whole bunch of different commands that we can use. So if you're up and running and kind of exploring the file system, maybe you're looking at different log files, um, the Nginx config is under Etsy Nginx. So let me see if that works here. Okay, so you can actually see all of the different Nginx files here. A lot of times I just um, update the conf D, which is the default server config, but here you can see there's the overall Nginx config. So let's just say you needed to change something with that. You can get an idea of exactly how it is configured right now and maybe some changes you wanna make. Maybe it's the uh, log format, maybe it has to do something with the size of different files that you can accept, et cetera. Um, also, in the uh, conf D, this is where the default server will be. So this will be changes that you could make to the default server. And you can see here that uh, I actually made this change, it's, it's already in my code, so I'll show you how to do this. But I've put this into the Docker image. Normally, this does not exist. So how do you do that? Well, now we know the path of the files that we want. So in, you could literally just copy this file right here because we catted it and paste it. Um, but Docker provides a really nice command 
where you can just do uh, Docker copy, basically, and you can give it either a file to copy from your file system into the Docker container, or you can do it the other way around. So what I do for a lot of my repos is I actually create an Nginx folder, and inside the Nginx folder, um, I can put any of basically files that I want to um, modify and customize so that I can then use that in my Docker image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a Docker copy and then we're gonna give it the name of this uh, image and we're gonna say, hey, uh, copy this default.conf um, into our Nginx directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over there. So if that didn't exist, um, it would now be available there. And then you could come in here and make some sort of modification. So here you could see that normally, let's just say I was in development right now and I wanted to make the error page 405 return a 200. Um, I would just uncomment this. Um, and then the one thing that I already have in my Docker config, but you need to add in my Docker file is this line right here. So we're copying from the local file system, our Nginx default comp, and we're putting that into the container effectively so that when the, or into the image, so that when we take the image and we run it and it's a container, it'll be using our uh, customized config. So then you can just come back here real quick, um, rebuild the, the image, um, and then you would basically just shut down your current um, Docker container, restart the new one, and it would be running with your updated config. Anyway, I've got a full blog post out there, so hopefully that helps. And until next time.